All right, we going? You ask every time. Every, you know what? Where you can see. You have your own screen. I'm you consistent. Can see. First of all, it says recording. You know, when you're my advanced age and someone asks you to read a screen, I hope you remember this moment, young sir. We got to welcome back to Talking Story. I'm not even going to give him a chance to answer. I'm so happy you're here. It is April. We have gone through the first quarter of the year, and that means we have to wrap up everything we did in the month of March, we have to pick a favorite read in March. And I think there's kind of three, three reads jockeying for that, I think, at least. there. It, this was a great, great month, reading-wise, for me. No, no, not for me. I didn't finish anything. No one's shocked at that. No, I'm certainly not. How's it going, though? Would you like to guess how much progress I've made? Well, see, the last time we talked about how much progress I've right. made was a couple weeks ago. That's Because true. I went to New York. You went on vacation. W would you like to guess how much progress I've made since then? I'm going to say zippity-doo. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, zippity-doo <laughs> progress while you were in New York. So, I can't blame you if I, I you know, well, I read on vacation, because I'm, I'm kind of weird. Well, I, I had stuff to do. I know, you had stuff to do, so. Let, let's... Let's get into it. We started the month on a buddy read with Britain from Some Oaky Dude and D with Through the Pages with D. Both amazing channels. I'm going to put links. Check them out if you haven't already. Uh, and we did both the novellas by T. Kingfisher uh, featuring the Alex Easton character. And let me tell you, right out of the blocks, right out of the blocks, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have to break my rule uh, the novella can't be my read of the month because I want something full length. Because I just said, you know what, I'll count both of these as, as a full read. And that way, because I, they were so good. This author, T. Kingfisher, let me tell you, I am absolutely going to keep following her. I have Nettle and Bone on the stack, and I don't think it'll be too much longer before I pick it up. And let me tell you why. What she can pack into few pages, what she's able to compress... Not only amazing, amazing characters and a great mystery and atmosphere just out the wazoo. Um, this one is kind of a retelling of the Fall of House of Usher. This one, she's all on her own. The characters go from this one over to that one. This first one, she brings in otherness. It's almost Lovecraftian into the Usher tale. She redefines gender roles in the classic Gothic story by we, we don't have someone that has seen too much and, and fallen into hysteria locked in the attic or someone just pining away in the moors. We have um, the person with all the answers is someone held back by the patriarchy, a mycologist, Ms. Potter, who is out there in the fields looking for these fruiting bodies and doing her paintings, and she understands what's going on. So she's on the forefront of solving this mystery, even though she's held down. And then even beyond gender, um, she's able to craft the Alex Easton character such that gender just melts away. There's all new pronouns here. Uh, that, that make you just, when you think of that character, it's it just things come to mind like loyal, stalwart, capable, and you start seeing the hero that she's crafting as opposed to relying on these old shortcuts we have of gender to define um, and limit in their definition. And then when this bleeds over, we no longer have a, a, a classic story that she's riffing off of. Here she's completely going all in on a ghost story. And I absolutely love the way that she layers in PTSD and the past baggage we carry and the guilt that we have to carry wrapped up in the ghost story, how it's layered together. This is just amazing work. Her ability of compression to get so much in, so few pages, is beyond admirable. And her ability as a wordsmith, the prose is lovely. It absolutely gives you a sense of time and place because this is late 1800s. It, it, it's just, just a phenomenal package. If you haven't tried T. Kingfisher, I would highly recommend these two novellas. It's a great place to start. They are very fast reads. They'd be wonderful palate cleansers. And I, I, I just devoured them, loved them. 
And I thought, hey, I'm going to break my own rule, and this will be book of the month. Uh, after that, actually, in between these two, I kind of want to break it up. I did my indie read, uh, and <laughs> this is something completely different than T. Kingfisher. This is that, wow, how could I describe this? This is that throwback book. Uh, that throwback book to back to a time when we didn't have trigger warnings. We didn't have safe spaces. If it was just in your face, grindhouse, nonstop action, this is that feeling where you, you're going to the flicks. You're not even going to the Cineplex. You're probably loading up the car, going, going to the drive-in, wrapping that little wire around the antenna outside so you can hear the movie through your radio. You probably snuck in a full cooler's worth of a case of beer, and you're just about to enjoy, like, the most gore-ridden, visceral, grindhouse double feature that you can imagine. This is that in book form. And I do believe it is what Nick Horvath was absolutely going for with this. He pulls no punches. Will you be triggered? Yes. Are there safe spaces? Absolutely not. If you're triggered by certain language these days, he takes no prisoners there. He's going to put it all out there too. To, to, to great effect sometimes, if, if it's violence, if it's visceral, it's all there. This follows the structure. Uh, our titular character of Sledge gets wrapped up into an underground deathmatch situation, and it follows the video game trope of one uh, battle royale on top of the next with higher and higher stakes and harder and harder opponents until it gets to the end. It's such a quick read if you're looking for that old school Take no prisoners in your face. No holds barred action. This is what you're looking for. Um, I would highly recommend it if that's what you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for something a bit softer, maybe a bit more thought provoking, this may not be the read for you, but people that are looking for that, all in on this right here. After that, we had to do a little bit of a shift, right, Jacob? We couldn't keep going on with our TBR the way it was because I just didn't have time. Uh, that, uh, that tracks. That's yeah, a lot we, of reading to do. Yeah, we, we had, uh, I think, book three set up for our Cosmere catch-up read of uh, Mistborn Era 2. And we had a chance to, to bring in an amazing author as an interview for our artist journey. So I had to kind of shift and, and get our Cosmere catch-up. We can't miss a month because we have to be caught up by December because... We bought plane tickets last night. We bought plane tickets last <laughs> night. We had we had committed ourselves and booked a hotel room. Now there are plane tickets bought. Uh, we can't buy the tickets to the actual con yet. yet. Not yet. Not until May 7th. But, oh, I hope to see everybody there that is going. And Jacob will be there with me. And it's like, hey, there's no backing out now. How sad would it be if it sold out before we Stop were able it. to buy it? <laughs> Stop it. That'd be really sad. We gotta though. get it. We have to be like waiting to hit the button. Do you think it'll happen at midnight? Like we'll have to be up at I, I, if it, we, I don't know. He I don't hasn't think released so. a video about it yet, has he? No. It's too yes, far away. He said it's May 7th, but he hadn't said it. But a he time. hasn't said like a time or anything. Okay. Yeah. Well. I fully expect it'll break the internet like every announcement he makes. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, He'll but reveal in any a case, whole other book for it. I had to just do the last story in Arcadum Unbounded. Uh, by Brandon Sanderson, which was the sixth of dusk, and interestingly enough, I don't want any spoilers. I know, uh, I know, probably everyone that's a Sanderson fan knows there is another um, secret project coming in 2025, and I know a lot of you maybe just want to keep yourself completely in the dark about what that is. Uh, so I'm not going to blow it, but it was actually very fortuitous that I read Sixth of Dusk and liked it. And that's all I'll say because of spoilers. Uh, but I absolutely did love this. The ecology of the world that has moved on. Um, and someone standing in the way of it moving on. And, and had how technology marches and pushed by, by greed. And it, it, it was just, there was so much packed into a short story. And it was a great way to wrap up Arcanum Unbounded. I really liked this one. This kind of hit me uh, in a really good spot. I was actually just, I guess, in the mood for it. Uh, the character, I really appreciated as well. And the world, uh, not necessarily a magic system, but relying on nature uh, through the through birds. If you haven't read this short story, I, it, this is one I would recommend. If you're a Cosmere fan and haven't read it, pick it up. Uh, so couldn't miss out on my Cosmere this month. Got it in. Had to shift book three, Mistborn Era 2, into April. Because we had this chonker to wrap up. Look at this bad boy. 
This, I'm doing a read-along, a buddy read, with Josh from Red Fury Books and Usman from Bards and Books. Uh, and let me just take a second here and say, our last discussion for this last book in the trilogy, we were going to be joined by Brian Lee Durfee. And for anyone that is a fan of BookTube knows Brian Lee is, is uh, falling on some ill health and is having a rough time. Uh, I know we were all shattered by the news that his wife put out, and I, and I know we are all triumphantly jubilant to see him do a video, even though he didn't look like his normal self. He had his normal sense of humor uh, and his glibness and his style was all there, and uh, it just thrilled me to see him put that video out. Uh, so I, we, I absolutely just want to say, Brian, get well soon. Uh, get back home. Put that content out that we all love, and we'll talk to you when you're able. I, I, I can't and wait to talk to him about this he, trilogy. He has a GoFundMe that we'll have in the description. We're going to link that. Uh, uh, personally, I've already hit that. I hope everyone else hits it. Um, it is a reality in our in our world that medical expenses can be out of control, uh, and he is one of ours on BookTube, and he is an artist that I absolutely follow, and uh, now especially, and uh, I was extremely happy uh, to hit that GoFundMe, and I hope, if you're able, you will take a look at it as well. We will link it, right, Jacob? Yeah, absolutely. Down absolutely. in the description, absolutely. go look Brian, for it and donate to him there. My brother, please, please keep going the right way. Uh, this, wow, okay. The first two were already like bonkers. And this just, the afterward where he says, you know what, I was talking to this great point guard and he, he spurred me on to write a book. This is that, I'm gonna leave every bit of it on the field. I'm not gonna take any of it back to the showers. I'm gonna live or die, fail or succeed on my ideas and what putting what, what putting it all out there. And he puts it all out there. I think this easily, and I've read Game of Thrones, I've read a lot of stuff. This, this I think this easily, highest body count I've ever read. Really? Oh, good lord. <laughs> like books one and two, you're building up to the fiery absolution. Ooh, it's coming. And let me tell you something, when it's coming, when it comes, wow. It don't mess around. It is a fiery absolution. High, <laughs> high, high body count, you said. High. I can't imagine. I, high. High body count. Highest body count. And the tropes that he subverts, it's just that guy that is going to climb on top of his desk and unleash his barbaric yawp upon the world, as Walt Whitman describes, and put his art out there and hold nothing back. And he is going to live his dream loud. And I love that about him. Does everything land? Did I have questions about, oh, did that quite wrap up or is that a dangling thread? It's like, you know, it started to begin... It was just so bonkers. I it, it didn't even matter. What did I say? I said it's so, you, there's so much violence going on. I walked outside and expected my car to be dented. Like it was that. Yeah, level. Said yeah. That. I was going to ask though. I know I know you have the talk, but I, as a definitive answer, I am curious. Uh, there was it true that he wa planned five books, or did we find out that wasn't true? He or? had initially planned five books. And I believe his publisher said, well, let's make it a trilogy, but let, we can make it a trilogy of three really big books. So he he did say in his foreword or afterward or one or the other, I believe, that he got everything in. He lost absolutely so nothing. So it was what he planned. It's it's it, He claims everything he planned to do, the books just became beefier. I see. So then my, my question was a, a definitive, there were some threads that weren't wrapped up as you predicted by the end of book two. I think but you just didn't care. Everything was wrapped up. Everything was really? wrapped everything up. Everything was wrapped up. Okay. Every if I was to if I was to pick some nits, everything was wrapped up. Uh there were by the end I thought it was moving so quickly, going through so much in so quickly that there were some character motivations like and this is again for me, my picture of that character. Oh, I don't know if they would do that. And I was wondering if they had more time of an arc or a journey, if they could, if he could have got them where he needed them on the board, uh, in for me a more believable fashion. 
I uh, see. But the action was so high by the end, you you started to uh, look for those kind of things less and less. But if I were to pick some, you, you know what what's a few things that I say clink for me? Like you know, you thump a glass and it's not that 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 resonance beautiful noise. It's a little bit of a clink. Uh, a little bit of clink for me was some of the character motivation by the end. I'm like, oh, I don't quite know if I see that. I don't, I, I never imagined them going there. And that could just be me as a reader wanting these characters to go where I want them to go. And the artist has every right to say, they're my characters, it's my book, they're going where I want them to go. So right, it, right. It, again, it's very nitpicky. Uh, and would I recommend this if you're looking for dark fantasy that is... Th extremely bloody at times uh, and, and has a climax that is, I think, is, as far as action goes, body count is unparalleled. I mean, this is, I would absolutely recommend it if that's what you were looking for. So, Is, is it up there for book of the month? It, I'm not going to, I know. I'm not going to say it's up there for book of the month. <laughs> no, it's not? So or, far, I would have broken okay. my rule for these two novellas. This, when I read it, I truly enjoyed it. He landed the plane. I thought, Fair play to you, my man. You, you you put a trilogy out there. You lived your dream, and you lived it loud, and you landed the plane. Uh, 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 fair play to you, but I wouldn't have said Book of the Month. Now, this, I would say Book of the Month. Yeah, you say is Book of the Month, or I is would it say in, in the, the running? running. Okay. In the running for There we go. This is why we had to change the TBR on the channel here. We had to move that uh, Mistborn Era 2 down the road because we had a chance to have David Liss on our channel and talk to him. This is his book. Came out a while back. I had missed it, and I feel horrible about that because he is a friend. But David is one of us. He will sit around for hours, talk about Marvel Comics or what Babylon 5 means to us. And he finally, this person that is an Edgar Award winner for his historical fiction mystery stuff, uh, his Benjamin Weaver books, finally goes all in on fantasy. And I couldn't have been happier for him because I know it was a joy for him to write. Still, still historical fiction, late 1800s in London, looking in the spiritualist occultist movement, using actual people like Aleister Crowley, uh, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, people that were involved in that movement, and then wrapping this this mystery around it, this family drama around it, where this person, Thomas Thresher, um, who is coming of age and his family is a, a, a very old banking family in London and he's coming into his inheritance and he has to work at the bank and he starts to see things are not quite right at the bank. Coupled with this, there are peculiarities going on in London. Now, for some reason, London has become a thin place. Otherworldly Weird things are starting to bleed through. Women are becoming pregnant and having litters of rabbits. It's that kind of level of strange things that are happening. And to these mysteries become interwoven of what's going on with his bank and his family and the peculiarities. And he gets drawn in and he must solve them. Uh, it was just a masterclass in atmosphere, in character, in prose, to give you a, a, a sense of place and time. He is a master of historical fiction, and then to layer in the magical uh, things that are happening here, just rung the bell for me in every way. Had that flavor of Dickensian humor for me when he described his characters, you would get pictures in your head of even the most spear carrier C, D, E, F characters that just happen across the page very briefly. You still have a picture of them. I just can't think of any nits to pick. He just rung the bell in every way, shape, or form. It was a joy to talk to him. If you haven't watched that interview, please go check it out. And please check this book out. Absolutely. When I read this, I thought, I don't have to break my rule. Yeah, what rule is that? I don't have to break my rule. I can have a full-length book for my read of the month because I like this every bit as much as I did these first two novellas. So... I'm out of the woods. Don't have to break my rule. I'm, I'm still going to call you a cheater. Uh, you could do that. And then after that, the next thing I picked up, because I want to be well read when we go meet Christopher Rocchio this week at his signing, I picked up book two in the Sun Eater Saga because I wanted to have the first two full-length books read and the first two novellas read before I sit and talk with him uh, at, the, at the signing. And this, oh... Jiminy Christmas, you talk about something that's in running for the book of the month. 
read of the month. That that would be in the right now. What do we have? We have T King Fisher, David List, and now Christopher Rocchio. Yes. That's in the running. Uh, yes, three way, three way, three way in three way running. And this is guys. Okay, we have to now start. We have to now start talking about legacy. When I read the first full length novel, I was like, okay. I don't know if it's a full five, but I think it will stand the test of time. I think some Eastern philosophy people will find this and they should start teaching it. Uh, it there's so much going on here. It's so multi-layered. Not only is he standing on the shoulders of giants in the genre, uh, uh, Asimov, Herbert, uh, Philip K. Dick, uh, it's beyond that. When your character is uh, from the line of Christopher Marlowe, there's going to be a distinct literary focus, and it is absolutely in this. The one thing that I kind of had an issue with in book one was a little bit of pace uh, because it was such an internal, interpersonal, spiritual journey of Hadrian Marlowe leaving his uh, aristocratic roots and moving out into the galaxy to understand what's going on in this empire. This solves that problem of pace because you have this foreboding sense of otherness pushing everything forward. This young man that left his aristocratic family in this time of war, thinking high ideals of there's a better way than combat. I think we could, we could, we could drive for peace if we could only get them to the table. And that's where he's at at the beginning of this novel. And he is at a completely different place by the end of this novel. And that journey, that interpersonal journey, coupled with the driving force of that dread of the other as he comes into contact with not only the Seelsian that the war is going on with, but another overbearing other on top of that that's pushing the momentum forward all the while drawing its roots in literature from Shelley and and Marlowe and Shakespeare and it just so many Easter eggs of who we are and how story defines us and makes us, it is absolutely jaw dropping. We have to now, I think even after only two books, start talking about legacy for Christopher Rocchio. I'm not sure if he's even considering where when this is over, where he may stand in the pantheon of all time great series of Galactic Empire. And I mean, wow, the achievement at his age to do that. I just, I have to, look, I gotta throw the cheaters on, and I love me, I am a sucker for and love cosmic horror, that sense of dread, that sense of other that is always bleeding through and pushing you. I gotta read a paragraph. This for me is the best description of foreboding other that I have come across in so well let me let me give you some mood lighting so here. long oh you I got mood lighting Ooh, okay mood lighting here we go catch this it is strange is it not that there are always people such as I men who believe the stranger is always more trustworthy than their neighbor when we were young we looked to the stars with hope praying that what gods or kings there were in the unpastured dark were greater than man, and so moral and righteous beyond imagination. We imagined they might descend from heaven and bless us with their gifts, and that it was only human nature that corrupted, for evil required the black hearts of men to create it. In my flagellatory arrogance, I could not conceive of evils other than our own, darker and stranger, nor could we conceive that what was evil to us was natural to others, incidental. But Satan sprang not from Adam, and it was from the blood of Kingu that Marduk made the first men, and not the other way around. Evil is older than we, other than we, or is greater than, extending back and forward across all of conscious time. Reader, there are other devils than man, and by our evolved reason, we may be sure of understanding human devils only. 
an evil we can't even comprehend. It is beyond us. It is that sense of other that he captures that drives this narrative. It is like Fortinbras coming down into Denmark when Hamlet is trying to untangle all the threads of this murder. This absolutely in the running. What else can I say? That it was the greatest book of all time. I can't say that, but I mean, it's it's in the running for my read of the month. I and mean, I, to say that he has to start thinking about how old is Rakio? Late twenties, maybe. Young. I mean, he's, he's very young. He's very young. To say that he's in the in up there in the pantheon of You've some of the greatest of all time. Got to start thinking about legacy. He has to start thinking about legacy. That's quite possibly the highest praise. That's 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 huge. That's huge. And when you talk about legacy, how about a foundational read of fantasy? David Edding's Pawn of Prophecy, The Belgariad, absolutely foundational. I had never read this. And my hat's off and thanks to Heidi and Lukey and everyone that sent me this set. Uh, I was so happy to start it. And wow, it's just so rare that you pick up something and read it and the magic just transports you. It is, forget about the book. The experience is a portal fantasy that pulled me back to my youth. If you picked this up and read it at just the right time, you would be a fantasy fan for the rest of your life. It is that type of gateway drug. It is that type of candy, that type of sugar addiction that you just can't kick when you want a donut every morning. And I'm speaking from experience. Uh, I know you are. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, I'm telling you, it is just special. It just made me smile. It made me feel like a kid again. And I cannot wait to pick up book two. It, it, it just, it's what, should, what a lovely coming of age tale, a lovely mystery, every trope that you want to see. And when you see it, it's used to perfection and it just makes you smile. I, I just cannot thank you enough for sending this to me. It is just going down like the best dessert I can imagine. I'm just having the mo most wonderful time with it. So there's that. Then I had a little bit of time after all of this before a few days left of the month and I grabbed a one piece, had to do uh, volume three. So this book is one, two, and three. Had to finish up this book. Uh, very interesting. Finished up Buggy the Clown story. Wasn't a huge fan of Buggy. Uh, then we go into kind of this uh, boy that cried wolf story. Very interesting. He's always pulling from the, the places of story that you don't think he's going to pull from. And it's very interesting, this amalgamation of stories that he's putting together uh, and, and styles that he's putting together of slapstick humor and interesting themes and amazing heart and a story of loyalty and what treasure really means and what loss really means, what truth really means. There's a lot going on here, and and when I, I I have so much on my stack that I want to catch up with. I don't think I'm going to run out and buy the next book, books four, five, books four, five, and six right away. But for I just I I keep thinking about it. I do keep thinking about it. Is this the greatest story of all time? I mean, look, I know there's chapters up into the thousands. Are there really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. No, I, this is volume three, but I think it ends at chapter, I, let me see where it, it ends at chapter, I don't know, but I, yeah, it ends at chapter 26. Volume three ends at chapter 26. And, and it goes to thousand, like I'm multiple sure thousands? The chapters now number in the thousand. I'm, I'm pretty sure. That's insane. So could it be ranked up there? With, I mean, what he does with this, where it goes. Quite possibly. I mean, I really don't know. It's it's all the building blocks are there. I'm curious what your thought because I I have tried to get you to watch foreign movies. Yeah. To indulge in anything. I've watched foreign, a lot foreign. of foreign movies when I'm I was aware. younger, and I could see the screen better. I'm aware, but okay. you wouldn't do it. I, yeah, I because it because it, it wasn't really your thing. Yeah. Not that that's a problem. It just yeah. wasn't really your thing. To now. Go over to the dark side and read your first manga. What, what was your experience? I loved it. And I'll tell you why. I was reading so little then, I only wanted comfort food. It, 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 when I read, 
it was a very special thing and I wanted what I wanted what I wanted. I wanted comfort food. Now reading something like this, it's important that you shake yourself up from your comfort area. I want I want something culturally different than what I'm expecting in a story. Because I'm reading so many different things, I want a different flavor, I want a different texture, I want to shake myself up. So I think that's the main difference. And this absolutely does do that. So I I don't know. I say I'm not going to go grab the next one, but I I just I am going well, to a bookstore Thursday. Then qu- if question, they have it, I might grab the next one. I don't know. Question for you: Would you pick up another manga if someone recommended it to you? Sure. I'm very interested in Berserk. Put it in the comments. I'm well, ver- if you're going to get Berserk, then but I'm very interested in Berserk. I, that's what I hear. Um, and Vinland Saga. So I, those we'll are see. the ones. Okay, we'll see. And then I had some time. I had to read my American comics. I had the full run from James Tinian. He's he's gotten Neil Gaiman's toys. He's doing some Sandman stories. He's grabbing all the Gaiman's toys off the shelf. Uh, and I really loved the first six of this. The second six are out in full now, along with the Thessaly chapter that is like a special one shot. So I read all seven of these. I was disappointed. And I love James Tinian. James yeah. Tinney did my favorite comic stuff of 2023. And and I'm going to read World Tree coming up as soon as I get the next six issues. It could be my favorite comic of 2024. I just, this, after the first six, I was expecting more. It just didn't hit me the way I was hoping for it to. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I didn't enjoy it. It just didn't quite ring that bell that I was hoping it would. Well, I think James Tinian's work is a high bar to meet already. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, not everything he does. You know, like the guy is straight up double, but he didn't knock it out of the park. But he, it's still every up bat he he hits the ball. So, you know, what what can you do? This my madman, my madman Irishman Garth Innes right here did knock it out of the park with this. This is that police procedural that is wrapped up in this elemental spirit crashing into our modern world just riding havoc in New York City like it is everything that you think it's going to be it is like a great detective slash horror film and it's just so well written the art is absolutely realistic and beautiful it's just like you're watching a, a detective flick um there's there's no stuttering of the motion every panel leads into the next there's no flaws in the flow of it uh the story is very inventive. I absolutely enjoyed it, and be ready for some body horror. If that's what you're looking for, oh like my god, go pick this up. Oh man, woo! Yes, big time, big time. I've actually never read Garth Ennis. That's not true. I read a couple issues of Preacher. And yeah, didn't, didn't get too into it. Yeah, you. I like the show a lot, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Big fan of the show, especially season one. Um, so that's it. That's that was our month. Like, what, I mean, I'm pretty sure we had a good month around here. That's ridiculous to see it all together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had a good month around here, and I am absolutely. Hold on. Can I can I get some real quick just to compare? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah how how fa- I'm I'm going with it. This is absolutely going to be my read of the month for March. Christopher Rocchio. Uh, this 100% blew my doors off, blew my hair back. So that, that you're going to compare. Let's, okay. Let's see. Here's Jacob's stack. Yeah. And that, I, I got to here. Yeah. And here's my stack. So what, what do I get? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I get the experience of having a book, a read of the month, that is this level and it beat out i'm almost positive some of the i'm almost positive when i put my reads of the year together like my top 10 i mean david list could absolutely be on there some of this month could make my best of the year and still this takes the title for the month and what blows me away is everyone says the next full book which is demon and white is everyone's favorite that it takes yet another step so I I got to read these books, man. Guys, I don't. I mean, this is special. This is special. Some of the, a lot of this is special, but this. But I mean, I can't say enough about it. 
That's will, it. For will us. it go up on the shelf up there? Oh yeah. In the, in the best. It's going up on your the little shelf. centerpiece of the best reads. It's going up on the shelf. I don't know about in the center because it's it's floppy paperback and it'll fall down. But it's going up on the shelf. What was your favorite book of the month? What was your best read of the month? Let me know. We live for comments around here. Hit us hit us up down there with your comments. I will answer them right away. The whole reason we started the channel was to talk to you guys about the books that we all love. And while you're down there, hey, that little thumbs up button, hit that. It helps everyone find us. It helps us grow the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you've stopped by a time or two. Maybe this is your first time. It's so easy. It's one little boop. It, you're done. One little click, you're subscribed, and you get to hang out with us all the time, and uh, come back again and again, and we get to know each other and uh, and hang out and talk books all the time. What could be better? I, I, I could think of a couple things. Well, I mean, still pretty high up there. <laughs> still pretty high up there. So, guys, thank you so much. My name is John Minton. Thanks for talking, for stopping by, and just going over everything the month of March had in store for us. If you if you did that, if you just want to see what this doofus got up to reading in the month of March, that means you are book people. And in my book, that makes you the best people. My name is John Minton. That's Jacob over there on the microphone. Uh, hello. And this has been Talking Story. <laughs>